tissue. We know that the cell is the structural and functional unit of life. It means a single cell of unicellular organism can perform all basic functions of life, example, movement intake of food and respiratory gases, respiration. In multicellular organisms, these cells are specified to carry out a few functions efficiently. Each specialized function is done by a group of cells. For example, nerve cells carry message from the brain to every part of body. Muscle cells contract and relax so that movements are caused. Blood cells flow to transport oxygen, food, hormones and waste materials. We also know that plants are also living organisms. Xylem and phloem cells conduct food and water from one part to another. In multicellular organisms, there is division of labor, which means that a particular function is carried out by a group of cells at a definite place in the body. A group of cells similar in structure that work together to perform a particular function are called tissue. Unicellular organisms are able to do all the life processes in single cell, while multicellular organisms have specific cells for specific functions. Plant tissue, animal tissue A group of cells similar in structure that work together to form a particular function are called tissue. Plants and animals both are living organisms, but their internal structures are entirely different. Plants are autotrophic, that is, they can make their own food in presence of sunlight, carbon dioxide and water, with help of chloroplasts. They are fixed at one place. So the tissues in plants are mainly of such types which give them strength. Some of them are also dead tissue which gives mechanical strength. Animals are heterotrophic and have to move around in search of food, mate and shelter. So, they need more energy in comparison of plants. That is why most of the tissues in animals are living. One more big difference between plants and animals is pattern growth. The growth in plant is limited to some regions. There are some tissues in plants that divide. Three basic types of tissues in plants are parenchyma, colenchyma, clerenchyma. While in animals, the growth is not restricted to some places, it is uniform growth. In animals, structural organization of organ system is more specified and localized. On the basis of their functions, animal tissues are of four types. Epithelial, connective, muscular, Nervous Plant Tissue Plants are autotrophic. The growth in plants is limited to some regions. Plants have basically three layers of tissues epidermal tissue, ground tissue, vascular tissue. Epidermal tissues form the outer protective covering of a plant. 
complete body of green plants is covered by a layer of epidermis. Outer layer of epidermis is covered with a waxy cuticle to minimize water loss and also protects against bacteria. Epidermal cells of roots have long and slender projections called root hairs. Epidermal cells protect plants from outer climate and also store the moisture. Ground tissues are the filling tissue of internal part of plant. It contains parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma cells. Vascular tissues transports water and nutrients in a plant and also provide support to the plant. They are of two types, xylem and phloem. On the basis of their dividing capacity, plant tissues are of two types, meristematic and permanent. Meristematic tissue Dear students, as we were discussing that tissue are of two types, meristematic and permanent. Those tissues which divide continuously and help in increasing in length and girth of plant are known as meristematic tissues. Depending on the region where they are present, meristematic tissues are classified as apical, lateral and intercalary. The tissues present at the growing tips of stems and roots are known as apical meristem. The tissue present on the lateral sides of roots and stems are lateral meristem. The tissues which lie on the base of internodes of stem are called intercalary meristem. Apical meristem increases the height of the plant due to the elongation of the root and stem. It is also called primary growth. Simple Permanent Tissue Dear students, we have already discussed that those tissues which are derived from meristematic tissues but have lost the power of division and have attained their definite forms are called permanent tissues. After some duration, meristematic tissues lose their ability to divide and take up a specific role and form a permanent tissue. This process is called differentiation. In permanent tissues, cells are thin or thick-walled, living or dead and mature. The shape of permanent tissues may be oval, rounded, polygonal or elongated fiber-like. Permanent tissues are of two types on the basis of nature of cell. Simple permanent tissues, complex permanent tissues. As we have discussed above that those tissues which are derived from meristematic tissues but have lost the power of division and have attained their definite forms are called permanent tissues. Complex Permanent Tissue Dear students, as we were discussing earlier that the permanent tissues are of two types singular and complex permanent tissue. Complex tissues are made of more than one type of cells. All these cells coordinate to perform a common function. On the basis of nature of cells, complex permanent tissues are of two types. Xylem Phloem Xylem is the supporting and water conducting tissue of vascular plants consisting primarily of tracheids and vessels. 
woody tissue. Phloem is the food conducting tissue of vascular plants consisting of sieve tubes, fibers, parenchyma and sclerides also called bast.